The Mille Monti was a legendary road race all across Western Fuenia, its winding coastal roads, narrow city centers and treacherous mountain passes. It was a race for everybody. You could run your average family hatchback and enjoy the ride, or bring your fragile sports racing car and fight the most prestigious brands in motorsports history. All of that on public roads, lined with enthusiastic spectators, always on the edge between glory and tragedy. The race became known for its prestige and difficulty, attracting top drivers and manufacturers from around the world. Can you build one of the iconic cars of the era, successfully overcoming the hurdles the Milli Monty will put ahead of you? Find out and enjoy this community challenge for automation, the car company Tycoon game. Hello, it's me again, der Bayer, and it's been a while since I last hosted a community challenge. Thanks to your incredible support in the past months, this channel now has 5000 subscribers, something I couldn't imagine a year ago. I want to celebrate this and give something back by organizing this challenge, the notorious Mille Monti in 1953. As the name suggests, it's inspired by the legendary Mille Miglia, but it turned out to be a lot more focused on cornering and less on higher speeds than the original. So let's take a look at the track first. The start is in Meranio, where the cars are lined up and are released one by one when their starting time, painted as their racing number onto the car, has come. They start the first short leg heading west over a small range of hills along Lago Keto, towards Bungato at the foothills of the Corvarolo mountain range, which marks the border between Pierona and Brenia. In Bungato, the cars are stopped to get a stamp into their roadbook, and immediately they head off again onto Lake 2. The goal of Lake 2 is Marina, and this was a difficult journey in the past, as the Corvarolo Pass was a major obstacle. But now there's a new tunnel right through it, making the hard leg a rather easy one. After the tunnel, the cars go downhill along the river Tuatolo and right through the city of Lupeño. When leaving the city, the drivers get a very nice view of the volcano Mont Sant'Ignazio, until the right turn to go round Lake Marina moves it out of sight again. After stopping in Marina, the capital of Brenia, it is a short and twisty run towards the ocean and the Gernau Bay, as an opener to the longest and fastest leg of the day, almost purely following the coastline. The roar of the cars disturbs the tourists in Viestella and Marina Fruiana, but who in this era does not like watch cars go at speed? When crossing the river Tiso, the cars enter Teresine and head towards the destination of Lake 3, the capital Porto Castelfranco. There, the cars head into the countryside again, following the rivers Lineo and Chitone into Pierona for a rather high-speed run towards Fanella. A small range of hills is crossed to reach the river Lineo again, which leads the way further north, almost towards Meranio again. This is a chance for the people who watch the start to see the cars around the halfway mark not too far away from the city again, before moving back into the city to await the finish. Then the cars head east to approach Piancosato, a nice city in the hills of Pierona. Lake 5 is one of the highlights for the Fruinian drivers. Back into Teresine along the river Arnati and vast farmlands, the cars go through Nanilla, where a new small sports car manufacturer named Cesalpina sparked a new motorsport craze in the area. Further south, just before the capital Terzo, cars take a detour onto a very narrow and difficult coastal road. Many people from Terzo have flocked out of the city to spend a day at the beach while cars go by. Those who are not at the beach will line the main roads through Terzo, giving the contestants a frenetic welcome and farewell onto the very difficult rest of the journey. Lake 6 heads further along the coast towards the east, and just after the border to Calides is crossed, cars take a left turn to follow the river Jamega, and then to move through Raikanta and Padita. Then it really becomes clear why the Milimonti is called like it is. No longer are the mountains far in the distance, shortcut by tunnels or just some hills. The Monte Fusco Pass is ahead, and endless switchbacks with steep inclines are waiting to separate the really skillful ones from the tourists. After the mountain range is cleared, the cars head to the river Verno and ride towards Doriana for the second to last brief stop. Lake 7 is a rather short one and a nice break after the killer stage that Lake 6 was. The river, beautiful lakes embedded into the valley between the Stenone and Cristone mountains, and very soon Montivias is reached. The Zoccolo del Diavolo announces what's to come. Two more very treacherous mountain passes, one just outside Montivias to climb to the very top of the Milimonti, then descending towards the Gasmian border, 
only to turn left again to cross the final hurdle of the day, the Paso di Pila. After another round of narrow and difficult switchbacks, the road and the landscape opens up, and the cars roll down towards Meranio again, along the River Sago and over the same roads they took in the morning to leave the city, into the masses of Tifosi, awaiting those who have made it until the end, celebrating the very first car to arrive and of course the overall winner and the fastest of their classes. A big thank you to NDD and their map for Transport Fever 2, where we can experience the round trip in 3D. A link to the map is in the description below and feel free to also check out the playthrough of the automation campaign with the Maester brand. All of the legs of the Millimonti are available as test track mods to be downloaded from the automation forums. The link to that is in the description below. The tracks come at a scale of 1 to 30. That means 1 km of in-game track is about 30 km in the fictional reality. A side effect of this is that longer straights are very rare and average speeds are a bit lower than you'd probably expect so no need to go for the 10 liter V16 this time. The cars will be in two major groups, touring cars and sports cars. Each of the groups has five different classes depending on engine capacity. You may only build a single car, as I'm expecting quite a few entries, so choose a class you like out of the 10 options. The touring classes are probably a bit more casual, the sports class is more competitive. But there are more than enough trophies to be collected and to compete for. First of all, you can try to get the fastest time in each leg per category, that means per touring car or per sports car, not in the individual capacity classes. The individual capacity classes are awarded with the class victory overall, so there are 10 different trophies there for you to grab, one per touring car capacity class and one per sports car capacity class. Then a special thing is the first car to arrive in any city across all of the car classes. So of course people are waiting in each city and they really celebrate the very first car to arrive there and you can try to be that one. And the interesting bit about this is that here the smaller cars will win because they will start first. More about that later, so maybe this is an incentive also to fill the smaller capacity classes. Then for the people who are more into designing cars than into engineering them, we have the design contest, both in touring and sports cars, for you to compete for the most beautiful car. And of course, the one trophy everybody wants, the Millimonti overall victory across all classes, fastest time. This will be the most prestigious trophy and the one most people will fight for. So for all of these trophies, I will award the top three positions, not just the winner. And I hope you find your way to victory. So as announced, let's talk about the starting procedure. The cars will gather in Meranio for the technical inspection, to have their numbers painted on them and also for the public to experience the cars and all of their beauty. But then in the late night, cars will start, starting with the small touring car class, so the 0 to 850cc class in ascending order, depending on engine capacity. So if you have a 300cc car, this is probably the very first car to go on the road. If you have an 850cc car, it's probably the last one within its group. So you can really play around and maybe sacrifice one or two cc to be further up ahead starting the race. After that, the small sports car category is started, then the second smallest touring car, second smallest sports car category, and so on. And each of the cars will start in one or two minute intervals, depending on number of entries. And in the end, uh, the difference in starting time doesn't matter, just the overall time they needed from start to the end will count. But the trophy for the car to arrive first is of course awarded to the car that actually arrived in the different cities first. So the decision for your car and engine capacity determines your starting position and you can gamble to have a higher chance of grabbing one of these special trophies. Alright, then let's take a look at the technical regulation, both for sports cars and touring cars. So first of all, the game version should be the stable version, no kind of beta, I don't want to deal with any game updates in the meantime. We should be safe if we stay unstable and also the rest of the rules have been made based on that. Then um, you set your car model trim, engine family and engine variant years to 1950, not 1953. Um, the cars will obviously be designed before the Millimonti actually starts and let's just say that's three years ahead of that. You may choose a car body from 1940 to 1956 and you are also allowed to choose mod car bodies but 
please no single seater bodies please no meme bodies if you're in doubt if a special body is allowed please ask i also would prefer not to see any tractors or something like that in a racing competition for the car liveries as you have seen in photographs these are basically non-existing so please no liveries period appropriate colors are preferred if you want to have some kind of two-tone color or a single strip with a special color go ahead that's okay but be aware that there are no sponsor decals no racing numbers you have to place i will add the numbers myself i will make sure that they look the same and look correct on the photographs so please just build it like it came out of the factory and then very important also there were no spoilers lips wings any downforce providing fixtures back in the day so please also don't use them i will check that then um, to the next page to have the bodies until 1956 available you may set the tech pool for the body section to six please leave all of the other tech pool at the default value of five there are minimum wheelbase rules please take a look at the wheelbase as it is shown on the thumbnail in the body selection screen if you have a wheelbase of 1.96 meters then it, this will show up as 2.0 and will be perfectly fine for the 1300 cc class for example same goes for the tire width there's a maximum value um, because tires were not wider than that back in the day 165 is the maximum for the larger two classes and the smaller classes will have to use smaller tires but they will also be lighter the tire type will be fixed and will only be allowed to have cross ply road tires please no cross ply race and also no radials tire quality is also fixed at zero so that we get no very low profile tires and yeah of course you can decide if you want to build a sports or touring car and there are special regulations then for sports and touring cars on the next slide so for the chassis touring cars may not have space frame sports cars may not have monocoque for the body panels touring cars may not have aluminium sports cars may not have steel to simulate smaller factories fuel type is 92 ron for touring cars and 98 for sports cars seating touring cars need at least four full seats two in the front two in the rear with the exception of the smallest class which may have uh, just a plus two in the rear this will allow a few more bodies for the smaller touring car class and for the sports cars you need two full front seats more is always possible and then for your budget for building the car this is what you have available um, you can check this value in the details tab at the end when you have finished the car please stay below these values and also please enter the limit shown here in this table for your engine capacity class and car type into the markets tab as the sales price because this will then give you an indication of how well this car would do in the market and i would like to have cars that would actually sell in the market to have realistic family touring cars and realistic sports cars and once you have entered this value you can check if your car achieves more than 80 percent normalized desirability for one of the four target markets family sport or budget city or city budget commuter or commuter budget fun or fun budget for the touring cars then sports or sports budget track or track budget light sport or light sport budget or gt for the sports cars so you only have to meet the 80 for one of these categories not for all of them and once you have done this you're ready to register your car and to send your car um, first please name your car um, appropriately so for the car model field you enter mm53 then your name like the buyer for the car trim the second field you add the car's name the brand model trim and then you're basically ready to go as long as you're still before the deadline which will be three weeks after this video is posted and also will be specified in the thread in the forums as well best would be then to head to the automation forums there is a thread about the challenge there you can also ask questions and there is a link to a google forum where you enter information about your car and also can attach your exported car file i just want to make sure that you know that there's only one car you can build there's only one try you have to submit it the form will only accept one post per google account so check your car before you submit it i have provided also a spreadsheet this is linked in the challenge description there you can check your performance of your car it's fully transparent 
and you can also double check all of the rules. There's a small section where you can enter the values your car has and it will remind you when something is not right. Of course, this depends on you entering the values correctly and honestly, but this is not something I can fix for you. So it's your responsibility to send a legit car. Once I have received your car, I have a set of tools to help me process the probably quite a few entries I will get. So I have automatic rule checkers, I have automated scripts, building the results from the values you have entered into the Google Forms. There you also enter the lag times of your car. And this again depends on if you enter the values on honestly. I will not run every single car on every single stage on my own and take the time, but I will check each car on at least one stage. And I will not tell you which stage that is. And I will check all of the top three for each trophy in detail on every stage. So the top three will definitely 100% correct. Um, for the rest, I will trust you. But I have also some tools in place to detect anomalies in the times you have entered. And once one time is wrong, then I will treat that as something has gone wrong with stamping you took a shortcut or whatever, and you will be disqualified. Same with any other thing you have missed in the rules or gained an advantage with. All right, that's enough threats. Thanks again. Good luck. Have fun. This challenge is meant to be fun. And yeah, I'm looking forward to your entries. Thanks for watching and bye bye.